You might be over 18, but maybe you don't get to call yourself an adult yet because you still behave like a child. Let me tell you a story. Most of what I learned about becoming an adult came from my experience at university. I didn't know much at the beginning, but very soon I learned some very important lessons. So let me tell you a story about two particular people I observed in my life at university. And we'll call them person A and person B. So when person A came to uni, he came very unprepared. From the very beginning, he had this kind of lost little lamb mentality. He had no idea what was going on, right? He didn't even know what to bring to university, even though the university gave him a list of things to do, like they give every student, right? And the uni, my uni, was known for being very supportive. Like they even give like a, a, a customer service call right before you move in just to check in with you and see if everything's okay. And my uni like receives awards every single year for being like the top for student experience, which is basically how much they help you, especially in first year. But despite all that, this man, this boy was very, very lost. He'd come into the kitchen and say something like, oh, where's the, ch where's the chocolate? He'd open the fridge and be like, where's the chocolate? And I'd, I'd have to explain to him that chocolate didn't just appear in the fridge. You had to go to the shop and go and get it. He'd be like, what shop? And I had to explain to him, okay, you've got to go to the, the local Tesco. Tesco is like the equivalent of Walmart in the UK. And you've got to buy chocolate there, right? He's like, oh, where is it? Where is it? And so I had to like explain this whole process to him. So I like got his phone out. I said, look, go on the maps, type in Tesco, navigate like this. And so you hopefully you'll get there because honestly, I felt like this guy could get lost in a couple hundred meters. So he goes off and he comes back and he comes back empty handed, nothing in his hands. He's bought nothing, right? I'm like, what happened? He's like, oh, I, I've, I didn't bring any money. I'm like, okay, you don't have Apple Pay? He's like, Apple Pay? What's, what's Apple Pay? It turns out this kid's never paid for anything in his life. He's got no wallet. I know he has a bank account because you need a bank account to be a student in the UK. So I help him out of a sense of kind of pity. I kind of take him through the process of money and things like that. I, we go into his room and we, we figure things out. And his room, that first day, oh my goodness, it's already stank of BO. His mattress had no sheets. His duvet had no cover. His pillow had no case. It was just a bare bed. That was it's just that. And it stayed like that for most of the year. As far as I know, I don't even know if he ever put anything on there. And on this day, maybe it was like a couple days in, like a couple weeks in or something like that. His boxes were still packed away. His room was like completely empty. He didn't even open his boxes up yet. There was one box that was kind of half open. And I was like, hmm, why is that? And I immediately saw he had a gaming setup on his desk. And well, at least he knows how to do that. So we did some searching and eventually we found a very well-wrapped small little box with 500 pounds in cash and a credit card with his name on it. So I have a sense of like, I don't know, I just wanted to help this guy out. I just kind of walk him through the process of like how you like handle money and credit cards and set up Apple Pay and things like that, how to pay things at shops. I just kind of help him out for that reason. And that in the long run turned out to be a bit of a mistake. And this routine would repeat itself, right? He'd be like, oh, there's no toilet paper. I'm like, yep, yeah, you need to go and buy somebody. He'd be like, why is my why is my t-shirt all like wrinkled? What what's happened to it? It's like, okay, you need to learn to iron a shirt now. And I'd teach him how to do that and take him through the process. And I'd come back into the room. There's a hole burned through his shirt and smoke filled the room, right? I'm like, oh my goodness, this guy. He'd be constantly asking me questions like, how do you cook pasta? How do you cook an egg? How do you make toast? I'm like, how do you not know these things? Is there a frying pan here? I don't, I don't have one. Can I use yours? And I like kind of reluctantly give my frying pan to him because I like, I know he's just going to ruin my frying pan somehow. And we go into his room on occasions and it would just be like a nightmare, a scene from hell. There were like stains on the carpet. It was all like sticky and crusty. It would be like his floor would be covered in like drinks cans and crisp packets and dirty socks. And there'd be like a pile in the corner and I could just about make out it was supposed to be a bin. It's just overflowing that much. It was just a, a mountain of just rubbish it was just like ugh. and his boxes were still there just gathering dust and he would just be constantly asking me things like bits of advice here and there he'd just be messing his things up you'd just be a train wreck and it'd just be annoying and like a leech to my life and so i had to like stop talking to him for a bit like just like kind of like distance myself from him in in general like he'd leave a, a mess in the kitchen like he'd cook some stuff and just leave his mess there right he'd leave his like clothes and towel on the floor in the bathroom that everyone's supposed to use he'd burn his food and set the fire alarm off for the whole entire building and after a few months he quit uni and went back to live with his parents in his home and we never saw him again and honestly we were glad now let's talk about person b Person B was a lovely individual, a wonderful person in my life. I feel lucky to have met this guy. 
he is the the polar opposite of what person a was like he didn't know everything he was still the same age still 18 years old pretty young guy but he like knew the basics right he knew how to buy food he had all the kitchen equipment he knew how to cook already wash his clothes and clean up and things like that anything he didn't know he would just google or youtube and figure it out right he'd be very a learning attitude and just like pick things up very quickly and he had way more responsibility than any other student i'd ever seen like you go and buy like a big 32 pack of toilet paper and say guys i've bought toilet paper for the flat you guys can use this it's all yours and he would like clean the bins in our flat as well like the level of responsibility to clean a bin like most like 45 year olds don't do that kind of stuff and he wasn't perfect like sometimes you might like knock over a drink or something and if it like smashed on the floor he'd like pick up the pieces and put them away and mop up the mess and you would never see like you would think it never even happened that that was how clean it was afterwards or maybe he might like get drunk and upset a girl for some reason or whatever but he'd wake up the next morning and immediately he'd go and apologize and make things better and you should have seen his room as well it was immaculate you, you walk in it would smell nice he had one of those kind of like humidifier things that like puffed like air like water into the air with the essential oils and it would smell like lemongrass or whatever scent he put in there and he made the room look very spacious as well like the rooms we got at university were were quite small but the way he was with his kind of minimal style and personality he made it look very neat and nice and spacious right his carpet was spotless he would vacuum at least every week if not more than that and i would never see his things out in public anywhere like in the kitchen or the bathroom as soon as he was done cooking he'd put his stuff away as soon as he was done with the shower he would like clean up around the shower and everything to make sure it wasn't like water everywhere he would be so considerate of the people around him it was just like such a pleasure to live with this person and he went on to achieve top grades in his class he was captain of the tennis team i think he he competed at the like national level right and then he was also chair of the debating society in his second year and i bet he's in some place right now where he's doing impressive things i haven't talked to him in a while but i reckon he's achieving success and so we have two stories there two men the same age so i ask you who was the child and who was the adult right it seems pretty obvious now Person A is obviously a kid in my eyes, and person B is the responsible adult. And the fact is, in modern society today, we are delaying adulthood further and further in time. It used to be a very common place, like back in the day, like way back in the olden day, that maybe when you were six years old, you would start working with your father out in the field or whatever he did as a job. At 12, you'd go start working at the, the local baker or the local butcher, whatever it was. And at like 15, you'd be married off to go and live on your own, get a house and start making a living for yourself and building a family right there and then. And then things change, kind of a middle ground between what it was and what it is today, where they said, okay, at 18 years old, maybe you can become an adult, right? And that's like just from the government. Like why, why 18? It's just a random number, right? It's just so that the government can control little bits of what you can do with the law and legislation, things like that. And at least people got married at their early 20s, right? This is kind of the 70s, 80s, 90s. What about now, right? Now we get out of the house at 18 we go to university which is great good for independence and things like that but the uni culture has really shifted and degenerated into this very debaucherous nature of like sex casual sex drugs alcohol and just the worst debaucherous parts of human nature where these things are encouraged and just think about that for a second right you think you go to uni to become an adult and become better as a human being but do you really think all those things are responsible mature bring you into adulthood but yeah at least you're great at having casual sex and great at getting and using drugs and great at drinking alcohol wow but no we're not going to teach you how to be an adult we're not going to teach you about finances about how to be a good father about how to be a good person in general forget all that just fun and party yeah let's go so then after a couple of years at uni you come back home and live with your parents and you're struggling to find a job you might wait until like your your 30s at least and then you're thinking ah oh, i need to do something it's getting late isn't it i need to find a wife and start maybe moving out and getting a job only in your 30s right how late is that if we go back in time again to that that olden days guy he's in his 30s he has a job that he loves he has a wife and he's building a family and he's got kids of his own maybe even grandkids soon and now today society is encouraging us to delay that wonderful part of our lives filled with such meaning and purpose yeah forget about that that can wait right they're encouraging us to be forever children it's like peter pan and think about the story for a second right you might think oh it's just a kid's film it doesn't mean anything it's a warning think about it right peter pan lives in neverland right he never grows up he lives with the lost boys his group of people 
and he doesn't grow up. And so to be with Wendy, his kind of love interest, he has to give all of that up, that childish play and become an adult to be with Wendy. So it's a movie that's kind of warning us about what will happen if we don't grow up, if we choose to stay in Neverland forever. So let me ask you this, what do you want to do? Let me tell you my story, right? It's not a perfect story, but it's a brutally honest one. When I was 18, I went to university for five years, right? Quite a long time, right? And it was really good for my independence. It really helped me to gain independence from my parents and be on my own. And it was because I felt really underdeveloped at that age that I was really, really wanting to, you know, get out like and catch up with other people, right? I felt behind, so I was like, I need to grow up quick. And the culture, I was tempted by it, right? The drugs, sex, alcohol, it was exciting to me, but I soon learned that it was not a good thing for me in my life. And I was never a fan of drugs and alcohol, but I tried it once or twice and I was like, yep, this isn't for me. This is something that's bad. I'm not going to do it. I rejected the uni culture in most ways and I decided to focus on myself and improving myself. And now I'm 24. I've decided to live with my parents for a year. And honestly, I'm a bit embarrassed to admit that, right? At this age, 24, I'm still living with my parents. And it's because I'm broke, right? Not out of choice. But as you can see from my channel, I'm working incredibly hard to change that. I have these same goals, right? A meaningful career to find a wife, to build a family. And this isn't all I do, by the way. Like I have a part-time job where I work to, to pay for my own things because although I might be living in my parents' house, I'm gonna pay for my own things, right? I don't want my parents to pay for all of my, my food, my shopping, all that kind of stuff. I'll pay for that myself. You see, I feel like I had a bit of a late start to the game. And so I'm fighting with every atom of my person to catch up and grow and go beyond that as soon as possible, right? What about you? Where are you at in life right now? Where do you want to go? Are you taking the steps to get there? And if not, why not? What are you waiting for? So don't be a sheep, an NPC that just follows a crowd and just delays childhood forever and forever and just doesn't accept the responsibilities and the beauty and wonderfulness of adulthood. Be a thinker. Understand how great it is to have that burden of responsibility and become an adult. Understand that that is what life is about, truly. Growing up, taking responsibility and becoming an adult. So with that being said, I hope this video helps you out. Thank you so much for watching. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. Scroll down and subscribe right now. Cheers, thanks.